Hello everyone. Welcome to FMT Guru. So we are going to discuss FMT recall questions asked in NEET PG 2022. The question number one: Patient came with a history of acute onset of diffuse alopecia. Wife complained of behavioral changes in him for past one to two months. Doctor looked at nail, made the diagnosis. The heavy metal poisoning is options are thallium poison, arsenic poison, mercury poison, and lead poison. We discussed many times in our classes. Heavy metal poison is very very commonly asked in your exam. Like arsenic was asked in last INI CET exam. Two questions were there. Okay, so now this question you can see here there is a diffuse alopecia and and also there is a presence of Aldrich Meese line and also there is a behavioral changes. So this is the classical triad of thallium poison. Meese line also can be seen in arsenic, but look at the question. This question is framed from the standard textbook KS and Reddy 35th edition page number 415. It is clearly given diffuse alopecia the, uh, uh, the and also mist line and also there are some uh, personality or behavior changes go in favor of thallium. It is not arsenic, it is not mercury, it is not lead. So very commonly asked topic. Let's see how this thallium. So what is given in case and ready? Thallium poisoning. It is thallium sulfate. Look at this. This is the thallium sulfate. You can see here thallium sulfate is a colorless, tasteless, odorless compound. You can mix with any food and drink. That's why. So this is one of the ideal homicidal agent. It is also known as poisoner's poison. Okay, it is used as insecticide, it is used in fireworks, metal alloy, it was also used in tuberculosis, syphilis, gonorrhea, it is a well known rat poison we discussed in our classes. The fatal dosage 6 to 40 milligram per kg body weight and the fatal period is 24 to 26 hours. 1 gram in general is the fatal dosage. The mechanism we discussed many times my dear students substitution of potassium adenosine triphosphatase and other enzymes in Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation that leads to all these clinical features. What are the clinical features? There are four important clinical features. One we can see the left side there is a alopecia, alopecia diffuse alopecia, alopecia completed in 30 days. The most common presenting complaint is alopecia. Second there will be mental confusion with lethargy. Third, you can see the peripheral neuropathy working on hard coal. That is the that is the word given to explain the peripheral neuropathy caused by thallium and and painful ascending polyneuropathy that occurs in two to five days after the intake of the poison. And very important one is the mist line. We discussed many times in our classes. Mist line also seen in arsenic. It is also seen in thallium. Let's see about the uh, diagnosis and the treatment. The treatment of choice as we discussed many times. Prussian blue 125 mg per kg body weight BD orally. What is that? Potassium peric hexa cyanoferrate and the differential diagnosis is Julian Barry syndrome and the cause of death is respiratory failure and there will be signs of asphyxia on post mortem examination CPC that is present congestion cyanosis and petechial hemorrhages. So this is about the question number one thallium poison. Yes, second question. Second question was in the uh, taken from the mechanical injury. Identify the mechanical injury given in the picture and the finding is laceration over the fingers and the palmar aspect of the hand. Options are active defense injury, postmortem artifact, passive defense injury, self-inflicted injury. Remember self-inflicted injury was the question asked in last NICD exam. So, but this is not the self-inflicted injury. 
remember here it is seen over the fingers and the palmar aspect of the hand so the answer must be active defense injury okay so this is active defense injury according to case and reddy 35th edition page number 158 let's discuss only about the defense injury so what are the defense injuries are defense wounds defense wounds are those so they are due to immediate instinctive reaction of the victim to save himself okay consider a case of attempt to murder or murder the person try to uh, escape from the crime scene or he, he will try to protect from the uh, you know uh, assault in that case defense wounds are seen there are two types one is active and the passive active seen when victim grabs the weapon okay this is the active defense injury when victim grabs the weapon so what are the common sites common sites are the palmar aspect of the hand and the fingers and also the bends of the fingers are the thumb so that is active what is passive and usually this cuts active defense injury they are usually irregular they are usually racked that is according to case and reddy passive passive when a person try to defend when when he raises the hand like this arm hand leg so there can be bruises there can be abrasion there can be incised wound so they are known as passive defense wound the common site of incised wound is extensor or the ulnar surface of the forearm and remember these defense wounds they indicate it is a homicide they indicate it is a homicide and one more point remember when the patient is unconscious these defense injuries are absent so the answer for this question is active defense injuries you can see here one one more picture that is showing so this is the active defense injury so this is the active defense injury you can see the this is how it looks when person try to uh, you know grab the weapon and this is the passive defense injury passive defense injury both so this is the passive defense injury so this is question number 2 Question number three. Type of hymen given in the image. Options are septate, semilunar, annular, fimbriated. So your answer should be it is septate because you can see the two openings. Whenever you see two openings, so in between there is some tissue is there. So this is the septate hymen. According to Case and Reddy, thirty fifth edition, page number three zero three. Let's see what are the types of hymen. So there are different types of hymen. One is the annular, annular hymen. See, annular means whenever you see central opening, annular. Crescentic hymen, also known as semilunar. It is also known as semilunar. And remember, this is the most common. So this is the most common hymen. so this can be asked in upcoming exam most common septate hymen you can see the two openings two openings cribriform remember we can see multiple openings so whenever you see multiple openings multiple openings okay and what is fimbriated hymen fimbriated hymen so this is whenever you see notches so whenever you see notches so that is known as fimbriated hymen and remember fimbriated hymen is mistaken for artificial tear it is mistaken for artificial tear artificial tear okay artificial tear the so most common is crescentic two opening septate cribriform multiple openings fimbriated resemble like artificial tear so let's see what are the differences between fimbriated hymen and ruptured hymen fimbriated hymen present anteriorly they do not extend into the base of the hymen so they do not extend to the base of the hymen but ruptured hymen they usually extend into the base of the hymen fimbriated hymen bilaterally symmetrical but what about ruptured hymen is bilaterally asymmetrical mucous membrane over the notches is intact in case of fimbriated hymen that is thorn in ruptured hymen 
the cars occur naturally fim rated hymen it is because of the sexual intercourse or introduction of the large foreign bodies so this can be asked in upcoming exam difference between fim rated hymen and ruptured hymen and one more point remember the most common site of hymen tear is posterior lateral and and remember in children hymen tear is very very uncommon because it is deep seated it is the last year mcq and also one more gk rod glister thin rod is an instrument to uh, look for you know hymen tear next fourth question one patient was brought to casualty with a ligature mark in the neck and the neck which was completely encircling the neck it is transverse below the thyroid cartilage and there was absence of dribbling of saliva from the angle of mouth so what is the diagnosis options are manual strangulation ligature strangulation antimortem hanging bands dola see antimortem hanging remember dribbling of saliva present in antimortem hanging so it is not the answer bands dola as you know all of your type of strangulation so at the elbow bend or knee bend so that is ruled out here either it should be manual strangulation known as throttling or it is ligature strangulation see the best answer is b is the correct answer which is the ligature strangulation strangulation by ligature according to case and reddy 35th edition page number 272 okay so this is the answer b is the correct answer let's see why not it is hanging so what is the difference between hanging and ligature strangulation very very commonly as topic in your exam let's discuss only few points so look at this there are two images given in this slide one is the hanging you can see here this is the hanging case so this is the hanging and this is the ligature strangulation so this is ligature strangulation remember in case of hanging the direction is oblique direction is oblique it is incomplete that is known as non continuous it is above the thyroid and the base is pale hard parchment like but in case of ligature strangulation it is transverse it is continuous it is at or below the level of thyroid and the base is soft and reddish so this can be asked in upcoming exam please remember difference between hanging and strangulation very very commonly asked so the left side that upper image that that is actually a classical case of hanging and the below that is that is the case of uh, ligature strangulation in case of throttling ligature mark is absent instead there will be six penny bruises yes leading questions are not allowed the question is little tricky here not allowed in the following except that means leading question can be asked so that is the tricky question asked so dying declaration remember in dying declaration leading questions are not asked dying declaration comes under 32 indian evidence act 32 indian evidence act leading questions are not asked and dying declaration and uh, uh, remember oath is also not taken so answer is not a examination in chief no re examination no answer is cross examination correct answer so c is the correct answer leading question that is yes or no type of question or the question which carries answer in it so that is known as leading question leading questions are asked only in the cross examination let's see how uh, the exactly the recording of evidence in a court of law that that is very commonly asked so as we discussed many times there are five steps the first one is the oath the oath comes under which ipc 51 ipc oath is not required in children less than 12 years and refusal to take oath is punishable under 178 ipc the punishment is 6 months and a fine also given second step is usually examination in chief that is known as direct examination so that comes under uh, section 137 of indian evidence act examination in chief is usually done by public prosecutor leading questions are not asked but remember leading question can be asked when the witness says hostile 
when a mission emptiness is hostile leading questions are not allowed are not uh, not, not allowed usually but they can be allowed in case of hostile witness hostile witness means u turn witness one who changes his statement during the recording then cross examination comes under 141 to 146 indian evidence act cross examination there is no time limit and also leading question can be asked leading question means yes or no type of question lastly re-examination 137 to 138 indian evidence act and last one is the court or the judge questions so judge can ask question at any time during the evidence recording so all these are very very commonly asked the question was asked from the same topic we discussed in our lectures so yes two year old child came with a history of ingestion of iron tablets so it's a case of iron poisoning the patient was having abdominal pain and patient was having diarrhea patient was having vomiting cyanosis hyperventilation all this because of acidosis on examination patient is in comatose condition so patient is in the comatose condition the best treatment is options are activated charcoal or desperioxamine british anti levisite penicillamine so it's a very simple question iron poison whenever question asked about iron poison you must your answer should be desferoxamine okay it's a simple answer ball you know ball is given in arsenic poison ball is used in heavy metal poison but here desferoxamine is the correct answer remember ball is contraindicated ball is contraindicated in case of iron poison and also in the cadmium poison i'll just write here iron and cadmium iron cadmium and also remember it is also contraindicated in organic mercury poison organic mercury poison so we discussed one mnemonic in our classes pico the pico was the mnemonic pico was the mnemonic so pico p for peanut allergy i for iron and c for cadmium o for organic mercury poison in four condition so ball is contraindicated mnemonic yaad rakhna p calls the mnemonic penicillamine so that is also not the answer so answer is for this question is asn red 35th edition page number 414 answer is desferoxamine so let's see what are the important mcq that can be asked in upcoming exam so one is fatal dosage 20 to 30 gram fatal period 24 to 30 hours and the clinical symptom is classified into four stages what are the four stages the stage one is the acute stage where there will be vomiting abdominal pain hemorrhagic gastroenteritis shock acidosis and coma so this is the stage one it's very common in, uh, in children's okay and stage two remember in stage two the patient usually symptom free around 6 to 24 hours he is actually symptom free then stage 3 there will be metabolic acidosis there will be liver necrosis jaundice there can be hypoglycemia because of damage to the pancreas shock hepatic and renal failure that occurs in stage 3 and the stage 4 remember it is a stage of complication so the complications will say gastric stricture pyloric stenosis and other complications so there are four important stages treatment according to standard textbook gastric levels magnesium hydroxide desferoxamine 1 gram intramuscularly given followed by 500 milligram fourth hourly for about uh, for two doses finally 500 milligram 4 to 12 hourly up to 6 gram per day so treatment is desferoxamine is the correct answer and hemodialysis also on treatment option action transfusion also can be done in severe cases postmortem finding hemorrhagic necrosis perforation of the gastric jejunal wall liver necrosis kidney tubular acidosis all these are seen in the case of iron poison let's see type of consent during hysterectomy procedure after explaining the nature of disease and proposed treatment and complication of surgery so here the patient is informed about the treatment about the complication about the risk about the alternative treatment so it must be informed consent correct answer is informed consent according to case and ready page number 37 35th edition let's see now from the standard textbook case and ready what is informed consent informed consent implies understanding by the patient understanding by the patient one is the nature of his condition nature of proposed treatment 
expectation of the recommended treatment and also the complications risk benefit alternative treatment all this comes under informed consent and remember mcq can be asked in upcoming exam so what are the what what are the exceptions for the informed consent one is emergency section 92 ipc second therapeutic privilege third patient when waves his right to some other person so these three are the important exceptions of informed consent question number 8 a drunk a drunk doctor after marriage party performed a surgery so and major blood vessel was ruptured and patient died so it is a gross absence of uh, you know reasonable care and the skill it must be a case of criminal negligence okay and remember b is the correct answer and remember remember arjun reddy kabir singh so are the two important examples we normally discuss in our classes criminal negligence is the correct answer it is punishable under 304 a ipc so 304 a ipc okay the punishment will be 2 years of the imprisonment so 2 years okay let's see some differences between civil and criminal negligence because it is very commonly asked in any exam so civil negligence no specific violation in case of criminal negligence clear violation of the law like example the classical scenario that is given in the question that is uh, doing surgery under the influence of alcohol simple absence of skill and care but here it is a gross criminal negligence means gross negligence consent is not a defense it is also asked in one of the exam it is actually criminal court trial guilt should be proven two year imprisonment according to section 304a who is the complainant the complainant is the state public prosecutor who has to prove the innocence doctor has to prove his innocence doctor has to prove his innocence in case of criminal negligence in case of civil negligence the burden of proof that lies on the patient patient it is okay so this is about the differences between civil and criminal other two examples one is the contributory negligence and the corporate negligence there are four types of negligence yes one newspaper item you can see we discussed in our classes doctor and nurses convicted for medical negligence kollam medical case i hope you remember this discussion in our classes identify the range of shot this is the little controversial question so options are contact shot close shot near shot distant shot so you can see here there is a entry wound is there surrounded by tattooing whenever you see tattooing whenever you see tattooing it must be a case of near shot yes the same image given if the tattooing is there then it is a near shot is the correct answer according to standard textbook case and ready page number 170 so what is contact shot let's see now there are four types of ranges in pistols wounds from the revolvers and automatic pistols range 1 that is the contact shot so this is the contact shot one we can see here this is the contact shot you can see the uh, stellate shaped wound okay you will see stellate shaped wound i'll just write here stellate shaped wound stellate wound you will see muzzle imprint you will see muzzle imprint muzzle imprint okay so these two are important findings in contact shot contact shot over the head muzzle imprint and the stellate wound okay yes sometimes there can be a back spatter phenomena also back spatter phenomena second one is the close shot close shot so uh, you know close shot whenever in exam question asked you know we discussed blackening is a feature of close shot so it usually between 5 to 8 cm pneumonia also we discussed in your classes backs what is b for b for blackening so blackening occurs because of blackening occurs because of the that is the soot particle a for abrasion collar is the general feature of any entry wound g for grease collar any feature of you know any any feature that is seen in case of uh, entry wound and s for singeing of the hair so singeing blackening burning all these are the features of the close shot so yes now what is the near shot the near shot remember there is a tattooing that is present 
tattooing is caused by tattooing is caused by that is that is the position of the unburnt gunpowder so the finding here is the tattooing the finding here is the tattooing and it is because of what unburnt gunpowder unburnt gp unburnt gunpowder you can see entry wound here inverted margin entry wound okay unburnt gunpowder so that leads to tattooing remember it is usually more than 15 centimeter less than 50 centimeter according to ksn ready it is when the range is between 15 to 50 then there is a tattooing that is seen that is a near shot near shot it is taken from the ready more than 15 centimeter less than 50 centimeter it is beyond the range of flame it is a beyond the range of flame and within the range of powder deposition up to 50 centimeter we discussed many times in our classes near range distant range all these are absent blackening is absent tattooing is absent singeing is absent burning is absent only there will be abrasion color green abrasion color is seen grease color is seen inverted margin is seen so this is a distant shot so this is a distant shot distant shot distance so once again i'll repeat there are four important ranges contact range close range near range distant range whenever you see tattooing near shot whenever you see blackening close shot okay yes question number 10 56 year old man presents with the fatigue pallor abdominal pain okay patient reports memory loss and he reveals that he works at a battery recycling land so whenever battery battery and all we discussed in our classes so it is the uh, one of the risk factor for lead poison so on physical examination following finding is seen the following finding is the bartonian line so bartonian line seen at the junction of the teeth and the gum and also there is a food drop so i'll just write here so this is a burton's line so this is a burton's line burton's line and this is the food drop Food drop or wrist drop that is that is wrist drop it is sorry it is a wrist drop wrist drop so food drop wrist drop are the finding in case of lead poison because of motor neuropathy lead causes motor neuropathy we discussed and on examination lead level is more than 10 so more than 10 and which enzyme is affected the question is asked about the enzyme and remember enzyme is ALA dehydratase and ferrochelatase the correct answer is B is the correct answer. The option containing ferrochelatase or ALA dehydratase. So, heme synthesis is affected. These two are very important. Rate limiting enzymes of heme synthesis. Answer is that is B is the correct answer. Page number 412. Let's see about the lead poison as we discussed in our classes. Just a uh, revision of the points. Uh, so, what are the sources? Lead acid batteries, bullet dust, air pollution, lead chromate lead digested fatal dose is 20 gram that is also known as sugar of lead lead sulfide is the least toxic form we discussed many times lead tetroxide at present in sindur and vermilion tetraethyl lead so that is 100 mg per kg body weight it can lead to lead encephalopathy please remember and lead carbonate so that is around 40 gram is the fatal dosage so tetraethyl lead that is used as an anti knock agent in petrol okay let's see now what are the important features so, there are five important features one we can see there is a bartonian line also known as burton's line remember burton's line it can be seen in various condition it can be seen in copper it can be seen in iron mercury silver so it is first explained by henry burton in 1840 it is seen up to 50 to 70 percent of the cases bartonian line second you can see there is a microcytic hypochromic anemia because of inhibition of ala dehydratase and ferrochelatase engine second one a for anemia anemia leads to facial pallor facial pallor is very very commonly asked question it is the most important earliest finding in case of lead poisoning it is because of the ala dehydratase and ferrochelatase lead encephalopathy that is very common in children Pneumonic is Bahubali, H for headache and encephalopathy, common in children associated with tetraethyl lead, it is H for hallucination, H for hypertension, H 
for hyperesthesia. Why hyperesthesia? Motor neuropathy, arsenic causes mixed neuropathy, lead causes motor neuropathy, we discussed many times. And, and also uroporphyrin, they are increased in case of urine. So uh, that is because of increased coproporphyrin and ALA that is. And here one very important finding, basophilic stippling. Why there is a basophilic stippling? Because of the inhibition of the 5 prime nucleotidase enzyme that leads to RNA aggregation. Okay, so all these are very very commonly asked image based question that can can be asked in upcoming exam. Let's see some more important feature. Let also lead to what abortion, atrophy of the optic nerve, arthralgia, abdominal pain is the most common presentation. Constipation is seen, not diarrhea. Diarrhea seen in arsenic poison. Lead poison, constipation that is seen. There will be food drop, wrist drop that is seen. Lead bands on x-ray and there will be sometime infertility, impotency, insomnia, irritability. All these are the important features of lead poison. So diagnosis as mentioned in the uh, question, blood lead level when it is more than 45. Yes, blood lead level 45, you need to start the treatment. So what are the drugs used? Calcium EDTA, 100 milligram per meter square. It is given intravenously. The ball is given 4 mg per kg body weight intramuscularly. Ball is contraindicated intravenously because it causes fat embolism. So it is given in encephalopathy. You can give oral DMSA. You can give oral penicillamine. Yes. Cause of death, multi-organ failure. Either encephalopathy, failure of vital function, liver failure, renal failure, respiratory failure, anything infection also. And medical legal importance of lead abortion. It is occupational disease as mentioned in the question, factory disease, souvenir bullet can lead to lead poison, cattle poison and also it leads to low sperm count that leads to infertility. Yes, question number 11, treatment of opiate poison, very simple question and it is a IV naloxone correct answer, IV naloxone. So according to KSN 445 and the plant here is the pepper somniferum, okay, pepper somniferum. So, as we discussed in our classes, cuscus seeds, they are non-poisonous, they are non-poisonous, okay. And this is the pepper somniferum plant, that is the opium plant. Let's see some point about heroin, that is usually in a forensic medicine, heroin we are worried about, that is a diestyl morphine. So, it is also known as the brown sugar, smack, junk, rope, okay. And what are the clinical features? The clinical features, you know, it leads to respiratory depression, it causes euphoria, it causes constipation. What is speedball? Speedball, very, very commonly asked. Heroin plus cocaine. What is hot shot? Heroin plus strychnine that leads to sudden death. Sudden death. Okay. And NDPS Act, Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Act 1985. So, the cultivation, storage, consumption, transport, everything is a punishable offense. That is passed in 1985. Clinical features, euphoria, respiratory depression, okay, and also there will be constipation, increase, appetite, so many things. Treatment, acute poison, your answer should be that is naloxone, naltrexone, nalbifin can be given. Chronic addiction, you can give methadone, methadone, and the test is Marquis test. The one very famous test, Marquis test is used in case of opium poison. So this is about the question number 11, 12, mechanism of cyanide poison. So it is a very simple question. It is an inhibition of cytochrome oxidase. It inhibits electron transport chain. It inhibits complex 4 that leads to hitose toxic hypoxia. We discussed many times. Answer is question number 12. It is A is the correct answer. Cytochrome oxidase and carbonic anhydrase inhibition. Okay, let's see about some more point about cyanide poison. Cyanide is an ideal suicidal agent. It is also used in homicide. Fatal dosage, pure acid, 50 to 60 milligram. If it is a salt, sodium or potassium salt, 200 to 300 milligram in 30 minutes. Inhalational dose, 270 ppm. And it causes, you know, uh, some brick red, brick red postmortem hypostasis or you know brick red postmortem hypostasis because of the histotoxic anoxia yes 
fatal doses 2 to 8 minutes usually 2 to 8 minutes and ideal suicidal because it causes sudden death ideal suicide it is also used in homicide very famous case we discussed in our classes cyanide malika case cyanide mohan kumar case in mechanism it inhibits cytochrome oxidase complex 4 treatment the drug of choice sodium nitrate sodium thiosulfate and also amyl nitrate i'll just write here treatment can be asked in exam sodium nitrate sodium nitrate sodium nitrate sodium thiosulfate sodium thiosulfate so both are given intravenously so these two are given intravenously through the same needle same cannula and amyl nitrate also can be given amyl nitrate amyl nitrate is given that is inhalationally inhalationally and we discussed in our classes sodium nitrate produces methemoglobin the methemoglobin combines with the cyanide forms cyanomethemoglobin that combines with sodium thiosulfate that forms sodium thiocyanate so that get excited in the urine so this is the mechanism and remember bitter almond smell is very very commonly asked in exam cyanide is a very well known asphyxiant like hydrogen sulfide lejon test is a test for the cyanide so this we discussed in classes one very famous case of murder cyanide malika cyanide malika is the one who used to mix uh, cyanide with the uh, you know uh, ladoos in, in bangalore she killed more than 10 people okay yes question number 13 question number 13 uh, an eight year old girl brought to emergency room for injection of an unknown amount of estaminophen it is a paracetamol poison she had been playing with her parents medicine cabinet her mom later noticed that bottle of estaminophen was open so what is the drug of choice you know all of your paracetamol poison so we use n acetyl 16 is the correct answer a is the correct answer a is the correct answer the question question was asked about paracetamol poison maybe the question framing may be changed in the uh, question number 13 but the question asked about the paracetamol poison the drug you know very simple n acetyl 16 that is the correct answer yes question number 14 question number 14 so a patient came with a history of flame bone injuries on the front of the left leg so front of the left leg means 9 percentage and the front of the right upper limb so that is four and half front of the yes four and half anterior chest nine that is so i think answer for this question is around 27 27 is the correct answer according to rule of nine it is okay entire upper limb is nine percentage front is 4.5 back is 4.5 and entire lower limb is 18 percentage so here only the so i think present on the front of the left leg the entire leg that is i will take it as nine so yes so you should know rule of nine very well so rule of nine is given by hasse we discussed many times in our classes hasse head and neck area nine percentage upper limb nine percentage lower limb 18 percentage chest is around 18 percentage abdomen 18 percentage pudendal area one percentage so this rule of nine is used in adults in children we use lb formula lb formula we discussed okay lb formula in lb formula let's see browder formula for infants head is 18 percentage 18 percentage each leg is 13.5 percentage trunk and upper limb are the same as adult so for each year above one year you should minus 0.5 from the each leg you should add sorry you should add 0.5 percentage to the each leg you should minus one percentage from the head head area till adult values are reached this is lb formula one more rule is the palmer rule one percentage okay one one palm is equal to one palm of the patient that is equal to one percentage of the surface area question number 15 is the last question a 40 year old hypertensive lady brought to emergency room after being unresponsive following a sudden brought a severe headache so whenever question asked about severe headache Severe sudden headache, worst headache, it must be a case of subarachnoid hemorrhage. We discussed many times. Vomiting is there, neck rigidity is there, BP 180 by 100, respiration irregular, she is agitated, does not follow commands, but moves her extremity spontaneously. Most likely diagnosis. This must be a case of subarachnoid hemorrhage due to rupture of the berry aneurysm. So, 
there are three types of you know uh, hemorrhages extra dural hemorrhage subdural hemorrhage and subarachnoid hemorrhage the question asked about subarachnoid hemorrhage this is taken from standard textbook dr anil agrawal textbook so uh, that is sh normally present between arachnoid and pyamater it can be uh, both natural and traumatic it is the commonest of all intracranial bleeds it commonly occur at the basal cerebral vessel circle of villus basal cerebral vessels much more diffuse than sdh much more diffuse if it is due to rupture of barrier aneurysm it is normally present only on the base so there is a uh, congestion also resemble like subarachnoid hemorrhage okay so and uh, all these are very important points remember edh sdh and sah are very commonly asked so just go through differences between edh sdh and sah edh you know due to that is there is one medical legal significance is the lucid interval the lucid interval is commonly seen in edh you can see here so this is the edh so this is the edh extra dural hemorrhage you can see this is the middle meningeal artery so middle meningeal artery that bleeds that leads to edh medically the significance lucid interval it resemble like drunkenness sometimes second sdh you can see here sdh this is sub dural hemorrhage below the dura mater that is common in old age common in drunk people common in boxer syndrome boxers all this we discussed in classes then lastly sah usually due to rupture of the berry aneurysm so there are 15 plus question asked from forensic medicine and toxicology so and thank you very much there may be some changes in the frame in the question or frame of the question and the option and uh, hope you uh, hope you understood uh, wish you uh, wish you all the best Thank you very much.